Hello everybody, welcome back to the third Batania Corporea tutorial. Today's tutorial we'll be introducing two new Corporea blocks, so that will be the Corporea Interceptor and the Corporea Retainer. Now these two blocks build off knowledge that you would have had to know from our previous tutorials. They'll be on screen right now, so if you haven't seen them, check them out if you are a bit out of the loop. If not, continue on. And before we get going with those, I want to quickly clear up something that we experienced in the last tutorial. And that was that we had a change of color, so we changed these actually to green, using green floral powder. And what happened was when we changed the colors of these sparks, it hadn't updated on our system. So we couldn't actually request items until we logged out and back into the world again. So one suggestion that came from the gyms, which has seemed to work for me, which may work for you guys, is if you do have this issue, you can see I've just changed these colors. We just place an item frame there, request some stone, and you'll see we do have stone in this chest. So what was happening is when we requested it, for <laughs> this time it actually works. But last time when we were requesting items, they weren't coming through. So what we had to do was log out, log back in. What the solution is to just right click on one of these, so the Master Corporea Spark, and then it should update. And it has worked for me, so give it a try if it works for you. Other than that, we'll get on with the rest of this episode. So I'll introduce you to the first block. This block is the Corporea Interceptor. And what this block does is whenever we request an item from our system and there is no item in the system, this will send out a short redstone pulse and it has to be connected to the same system. So we put that down there, place a Corporea Spark on it. Now that should be connected to the system. And we have to also tell it what item to look for. So we place an item frame, place a button on that item frame because we're going to be looking for buttons in this episode. And what we'll do is we'll request one of these buttons around here. So you'll see that there's no items in any of our systems, and you can't actually see the redstone pulse, but we can see that no item has come in here. We definitely don't have any buttons around the place. So if we put down a redstone lamp around there, and we press the button again, you'll see that short redstone pulse that comes through. Now that redstone pulse is really important. We can have that go off to automate, for instance, automate the button making, which we are going to be doing in the next clip. And we can have it just tell us that there's no, no items left. We can have that just automate a light and leave the light on. So we'll go over to the next set. Right around here we have a simple way of making buttons. We've got ourselves a corporea funnel on top here with a crafty crate set to craft with one item in it. So if you don't understand how that works, just check out my crafty crate tutorial. It's not too complicated. The fact that these are red and that one's white means only one item will come in. And we know that when we put one stone in a crafting grid, that'll pop us out a button. Around here we've also got a hopper hock and a chest with stone. So what will happen is every time this gets a signal, it'll request one stone, pop it down there, and send us a button out. So what we're going to do is we're going to automate this over here. So whenever we request a button, we'll get a button that comes through. So you can see we've just got a button in that chest over there, and the button comes around here. Now we shouldn't have any buttons, so that should be giving us a signal to craft a button. The way we do that is we use a corporea interceptor on top of this corporea funnel, we place an item frame in there to look for buttons and we connect it up to our system. So you'll see that there's already a spark on there. That's actually the spark for the corporea funnel. We'll place another spark there and you can see that there's two there and we definitely have both connected. So now when we do it, we get one button crafted. And the way that works is every time this corporea interceptor gets that message, it sends a redstone signal and that tells it to request a button. So that button will now be stored in that chest there and it won't ha wouldn't have come through here. So we'll request that, the button should come through. And now just to show you that the redstone signal comes through, we'll do it again. Button drops down, and we can also just request the button to come through again. Now, one thing that this system doesn't actually do is, say for instance we wanted 16 buttons, so we just turn that to the side, press that there, that's only going to give us one button still. So we're going to have to continuously press, 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 and we're not going to actually get 16 buttons. We also can't do it over here because if we did do that, for instance, there to 16, we should get all the items fall out on the other side. So we do it again. We'll just get as many of these out. So you'll see that that's not actually working again as well. We can also try putting that one there and that will only fill up the crafty crate to one button. And you can see that the stone jumps out on the other side there. So we're going to have to figure out a better way to do it. And right around here we have the simple solution to this problem. So instead of putting this funnel above the crate, we put it above a hopper feeding into the crate. So what will happen is every time this requests, it should fill up the hopper first and then go to the crafted crate and it'll allow you to craft those individually. So to show what I'm talking about, if we requested one around here, it should still request one. 
If we did this to 16, it shouldn't request any more than 1. Same as if we move this one to 16 around there, it shouldn't request any more than 1. But if we change this stone around here and requested 16 stone every time this gets a redstone signal, and we come around here, this should now request 16 to make. So if you have a look there, 16 go through there and it crafts them up. And once, it's, once they all crafted up, they should all go in there. And we can request them from here again. So we go 16, 16 drop in there. We've actually got the other three that we've got before. And it's pretty damn simple. Now we can have a look at the next block. This block will work next to a corporate interceptor. And we kind of need to know what's going on with the corporate interceptor to understand what's going to be going on with this new block, the corporate retainer. So what it does is it always has to go next to a corporate receptor. And every time the corporate receptor receives an unfulfillable request, so just like that, and sends that redstone signal out, it'll also signal to this corporate retainer that that request couldn't be done. So if we do this again, and we place a comparator over here, which can now read the corporate retainer, we request an item, and you can see this comparator now gets a 15 signal from this corporate retainer. What that means is we can indicate that we need to make some more of these items. So we can have a normal redstone lamp there, and that can read out there. What it can also do is every time that we've got that signal coming through and the items are getting crafted, the next time a redstone signal comes through to this corporate retainer, it'll remember the block that requested that. So in this case, the funnel, and it'll send it to request again. So if we place the block there and we send it a redstone signal to tell them that those items were crafted, that should now lose its redstone signal around there. And in fact, it's requested again from this corporate funnel to request whatever, in this case, one button to come back in here. So this is really, really useful. This can actually be used as an add-on really to the corporate interceptor, and you can still use the normal functions of corporate interceptor to make those items. So we'll go ahead and try this out on those buttons again. So let's have a look at a very simple demonstration of what we've just gone through. We've got our normal funnel around here. We're requesting one button each time. We've also got the setup that we had a bit earlier where we're using the crafty crate with the hopper around here We've got the funnel around there, which is requesting stone from that chest around there. And then we've got the interceptor, which is looking for the buttons. We also don't have any buttons in our system currently, so that'll send a redstone signal out to the funnel to make some buttons. Now what we've done is we've added this retainer on the back here. This retainer we're not going to look at to give us a signal off just yet. What we're going to use this retainer for is to request items once they've been crafted. So the way we're doing that is we've got a corporate crystal cube around here which, if you remember, gives us a one redstone signal when we've got one item, a two redstone signal with two items, a three redstone signal with four items, and it's logarithmic just like that. So we know that's going to give us a signal when we've got one button in the system right there. So what we'll do is we'll set this up and we'll give it a try. So if we push this button around here, that button gets dropped, put into our system now, and that gets requested again. So now we've got a button in the chest around here. So that's a pretty simple way of using the system. Now if we wanted to, for instance, get this simple, very simple system to request maybe a few more than one button, we would just have to change it around here to maybe 16 and maybe move it out to 4. For instance, if we moved it out 3 blocks there, that'll request 4 when we get to 4. So you can always get that to request a 16 or just mess around with some redstone and comparators. So that's that all comes back down to vanilla redstone stuff around there. So what we'll do is we'll also try and use the other feature of this corporate retainer, which gives us a solid redstone signal. So how could we use that to request just enough items to put into this chest around here? Now we can have a look at the other way of doing this. We've got ourselves our corporate funnel here, which is requesting buttons from our system around here. We've also got the crafty crate being pointed into by a hopper, which has got a chest at the top over here. The hopper has also got one stone in it, and that is dropping into a hopper, which is going into a chest. And I'll explain what we've done over there in a few seconds. We've also got the corporate retainer and the corporate interceptor, which has got a comparator coming out of that retainer into a sticky piston, which has got a block of redstone to stop that hopper from sending any items from this chest into the crafter crate. If we come around here, you can see that we've got a corporate crystal cube, which has got a redstone comparator coming out and two redstone pieces, which are on top of that retainer around there. We've also got this over here, which I'll explain to you right now. The reason we've got the hopper and the reason we've got it pointing into the chest just below this is as soon as these buttons drop down, they'll gather on the floor and not be picked up immediately. So it'll keep going until it's pretty much a full stack and then the hopper hock will only pick it up. So we've used a hopper 
just to make that a bit more accurate. And the other reason we've got a spark on both of these is because that'll total up the total number of blocks of items. So we're looking for buttons. If we had that pointing into the chest, there'll always be one in here before our system picks up the total number that we need. So it's a little bit more simple if we just put the hopper around there. So let's give this a try. And that, by the way, has got two redstone pieces. So that'll be requesting one item and that'll be requesting two items. Now, if we move this further back, we could get it to always request four until it stops. We could get it one more back and get it to request eight, 16, 32. Just to have a look at the first tutorial where we explained the corporate crystal cube, that should explain how you can get it to request a few more. So let's give this a try. We'll press this button and you'll see that a few get made. And then once it's all done, it sends us back the request that we needed in the first place. So we needed one uh, button around there and we should get the one button. So I actually had a few left over in there from my previous test. We should get a few more. Just clear our system like this. So there we go. Get that to make some. And we should get another button. So it's, it's always going to make a few extra. Because there are always buttons falling through the air. Now what that means is you could probably put this up one and get it a little bit more accurate. But overall it's going to just stock up your system. You can also try a few other ways of getting it a bit more accurate. So some suggestions I would have would be to put a clock, for instance, to always tick one, one, one like that, and that will get it really accurate. But overall, I don't think this particular thing requires a lot of material, so this system seems to work quite well for that. So as far as this goes, this is pretty much the most simple you can get. You can go even more crazy, so be a bit more creative with your redstone, be a bit creative with some of the corporea stuff. These are the basics of it. And if you guys do enjoy this, or if you like to see some more tutorials, definitely subscribe. If you did like this one, please leave a like, leave a comment if you've got any questions. Also, if you've got any more suggestions for any corporea stuff, I can have a look at getting into that. So let me know what you guys think. And thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.